now we're going to take you into the underground world of this can project here. Railroad going in here. This is where they pull the ammo in and out. They have this fantastic wagon. You can see that further in. Klima room, ventilation room, would be like compressors, equipment like that, pulling in and out the the air. So would um, was electrical driven. And there is a cabinet here, making sure that the level of uh, moisture would uh, be in control. That would stay there. And the ventilation shafts here would be filled with uh, uh, the correct type of air. This thing here looks like the rig of a mast for a boat, but it's the Ladestock. It's what they used to push in the huge uh, uh, shells. So it was a tool actually to push in the different kinds of uh, items going into the barrel. That is so long. So we're coming into the ammunition area. You can see here. This is the size of the, uh, the warheads, and you can see the hoist mechanism here. In one of my other videos, you can see when I'm inside of one of these, and there is uh, all of this is in the roof, but nothing is sort of uh, working here. You have everything in working order, and you have the grenade hoist right there. Put in. This is the this is the shell for the 38 centimeter cannon. Different colors, probably for different kinds of purposes. This is the claw that lifted the top shell. That's the front piece. And this is the uh, hoist that you used. We picked up by the crane and would go onto this table. Beladetur was here. This is the opening and it will be released, rolled into the area there and it would be put into the gun. So here are the different colors. You have a um, ammo piercing exercise shell, 400 kilos, high explosive, 800 kilos and high explosives. 800 kilos. That is how it looked in 1945. Massive amount of grenades were found in the bunkers. This is where the tunnel starts. This is where you would have had the ammo train coming in here with the small trolleys. There's one of the trolleys. It's a Denmark locomotive. It was used here. It's original from the uh, this location. This is where the pilot would sit and uh, ride this train back and forth through these tunnels, making sure that the ammo was stacked in and uh, enough ammo at any given time. So we're coming into another uh, area. And uh, this is the uh, actual trolleys, one for the uh, explosive tip and one for the charge and the, uh, the cartridge. Different things here, abrollen, fat and unrollen. So roll on, roll off. This is where the communication would have happened through this pipe here to the inside, giving the order release or powder charge. And these are the actual type of, uh, let me see, Kupplung mit Munitionsschacht, Kupplung mit Durreichifnung. Uh, different kinds of uh, meanings. So this is where it all took place. 
can see in one of my other videos you can see one of these without the modern accessories but this is the spot where the cannon would be assembled the cannon house would be on top there and the action would go about to fire uh, a shot So now we're getting into the manshaft area and I have to say this is very interesting, look at that, own latrine or toilet, many many spots, bist du kein so halt die Bechen rein, amazing, now you can see probably some of the genuine positions where they had the equipment amazing but this is also part of uh, what was here and actually what the facility contained ah that is really good to see look at that look at that there are the the bunks the beds you can attach them to the walls you can see that in one of my videos when a place like this is totally empty you can see here it's not so bad this life would have been quite okay if you ask me. Look at that, they have their helmets on the top there, there's a radio there, the guys are playing cards. Oh. High zone. This is where they heated the bunkers. Of course they have totally different kind of equipment here now, but uh, the heater would stay here to heat up the whole and you can see the original Bedienungsanweisung for the Budrich Lula Keschel equipment. When you see a bunker like this, you start to feel a little bit more about what happened here. You can see the bunker areas here. There's a soldier just going out to do his duty. His cabinet is probably the original cabinet that was here. You can see here you could switch on and off the uh, uh, lights here. You can see he has his gun there, the bunks. He was probably just sleeping. Read the newspaper on the back there. And he was just about to go out on his duty and uh, serve his country. So let's take you back in time to a Mannschaft's room with neun month. Have the beds here. And uh, these do like the authentic thing. These are definitely the original beds. There's the oven on the wall. Table for eight, nine guys. More bed. Original cabinet for the soldier. More bunks and more cabinets. As I was saying, it's quite impressive to see how they managed to do this. When you see a bunker in the terrible state that you normally do when you see them out in the fields being laying there to rot for 75 years, you can't imagine how they had it, how, how it was. And when you look at like here, then you understand what sort of place they were at. This is not too bad at all. It was quite warm in here. The, uh, air temperature and the moistness was uh, under control and uh, you can actually also close the door there. This is a genuine picture from Christmas of 1941 in this specific bunker. That is absolutely unbelievable. Look at the guys there. Some of them are probably very tired for doing their work but anyway this is where they lived and worked. This is the ventilation system. They could manually crank this thing here to pull air into the bunker, which were cleaned by filters. And this thing here looks rather familiar. If you would like to, you can watch my video uh, of when I go through a bunker. There's a five video series that I've made. And this is one of the items that I found almost one of the only items still inside that bunker 
and this is the proof that it was actually in a German bunker and uh, this is the use for it to be like a main filter into the uh, ventilation system and uh, it's absolutely the same item which I found. So look at this, huge wall down here and it goes washroom and ah, it's absolutely incredible. It's so nice to be able to see this Ausgang, there is an outlet and there is how it looked before. You can see the paint on the back here is how it looked before it was restored. And they did find the type of uh, authentic paint uh, variations. So this is what it's normally like in any bunker that we go into. This is how it looked when it was restored. It was pretty, pretty fancy if you ask me. This is the boss, his own room. He actually shut it totally and be by himself. Just had a beer. He's not going to sleep. And... Um, He's got his helmet, his uh, cap and a gas mask on the top there. And this is probably where he performed his duties with the German original uh, post cards and the military mail there. Typewriter writing out orders and a phone from the outside world, maybe an internal phone for the bunker on the other bunker here. Wash washroom or the place where they could wash themselves it's absolutely incredible how much work they have put into this to make it look like this this is where the soldiers could go in and wash themselves and probably inside here you would have the showers yeah looks very very much like the time correct equipment up there you switch on and off each of these heads here. Wow, that is really amazing. You can see the tiles that's been on here. Some of them are gone, but some of them are still here. Even here they have the heater. Look at that generator. That is massive, probably used to generate power. Have a diesel engine. And you have a generator there. Cool water anlage. Probably like that in here. Look at that system there with the electricity. Amazing. All kinds of things going up and down there. Supplying the power in and out of the construction here. That's another maybe spare unit of the uh, producing of the power inside, you have these lifting mechanisms up there, it says E. Becker, Berlin Reinickendorf, see if I can get you a picture of that, got a room here with a lot of equipment, that is for the camouflage webbing, you've probably seen some of my videos and you can see I found a lot of these what we call chicken nets but that is Tarnets mit Blatter und Kunststoff aus Kunststoff and that means it's a um, camouflage net with leaves made of synthetic materials and that is what we find in many of the uh, locations out in the forest 